welcome back to Zoo Creates. My name is Jessica and I have Christina with me today and we're going to be making some musical instruments today. We are going to be making some rain sticks and so to make a rain stick you're going to need an empty cardboard tube like from uh, you could do a toilet paper roll if you want a small one. I recommend getting at least a paper towel roll size so if you don't have paper towel rolls you can always tape two toilet paper rolls in to end and just tape around the middle because you want it to be a little bit longer or if you have an empty roll from uh, wrapping paper you could use that nice as well one. yeah you can make a really long one or you could cut it down and make smaller ones um, whatever you'd like um, but you're going to just need a empty cardboard tube and on one end we put um, duct tape on one end to start out with you could also um, use you could put pretty much anything you could put um, paper like and just tape yeah you could just yeah you could put a piece of paper and tape it up or um, even like saran wrap <coughs> something like that you could put on the end you just need a cap of some kind on the end and then inside it um, before we pour in our um, rice what you'll want to do is you'll want to get a piece of aluminum foil and so what we're going to do is we're going to roll up our aluminum foil Is this supposed to be a gap or just roll it tight? Just, you can just roll it tight, yeah. You can kind of crunch it together. If there's a gap, we can crunch it together pretty good. All right, and so we're gonna kind of do that. So we've got a nice long strip of aluminum foil and then you can either use your finger or if it's easier, like if kids want to try and you can wrap it around a pencil or some long skinny object. You just want to make it kind of like that and then we're gonna pull it off so you've got a nice little this is just gonna prevent um, whatever you're putting inside your rain stick from just dropping from top to bottom it's gonna kind of give it some resistance and so you're just gonna slide that aluminum foil right inside your rain stick and then you need to fill it with something now we're using rice but you could also use dried beans dried corn um, we've used oatmeal before that's a really quiet sound um, you can break up uh, spaghetti noodles into small pieces or find like macaroni, macaroni noodles. noodles yeah anything that is um, small pebbles yeah yep you could do we go outside and get rocks anything like that that will fit inside and you're just gonna pour it in now we have a lot of rice here we're not gonna use all of it but we're gonna fill it at least a quarter full I'd say because if you fill it all the way full it's not gonna be as cool of a sound you could also do a mixture of stuff if you wanted to, too. So I filled it just about to there, and I think that that's plenty. And then from there, you're going to want to get, you gotta close up the other end. So since we're using duct tape, we'll, we've got some brightly colored duct tape. I have some duct tape at home that has snake patterns on it. There you go. We've got some leopard print duct tape here, too, and there's some chevrons there as well. And so I'm just taping up one side and then I'm going to grab another piece to go across the other way just to make sure that that rice doesn't come out. And you then what I'll your do... Rice flying everywhere? No, <laughs> I don't. I already made a mess. And then I'm going to just get a long strip and I'm going to go all the way around to just make sure that those top pieces stick. And if you just have gray duct tape, that's fine too. You can get some markers out and kids can decorate it. So that works as well. So there, I have it all sealed up so nothing's gonna get out. And as I turn it, you can kind of hear the rice going back and forth. Yeah, and if they go slowly, they can hear it. And so it's gonna sound a little bit like the rain. All right, and now all we have to do is decorate it. So the reason we're making rain, when we make rain sticks here at the zoo, we like to talk about the rainforest, which is um, can be found down in Central South America, in uh, Central Africa, um, in Central Asia, lots of places like that. And something um, that happens a lot in the rainforest is what do you think? What weather occurrence do you think happens a lot in the rainforest? Probably rainy weather. Yes, it <laughs> rains a lot in the rainforest that is why we call it the rainforest and so the rainforest is a really important part um, a really important habitat um, on planet earth there are 
millions and millions of animals that live in the rainforest. What are some examples of some rainforest animals? So some of them could be frogs, um, lots of bugs like the rainforest with the humidity. Then there's a lot of birds as well that will enjoy the rainforest. Pretty much any animal that likes trees and that likes water will enjoy rainforest. All right, what are some animals here we, at the zoo that we have that enjoy the rainforest? We have a couple frogs in our department that would enjoy the rainforest. Uh, we have some bugs that would, some of our larger reptiles like Moche we met last week, he would really enjoy the rainforest. Um, let's see, uh, some of our large snakes as well. Jersey, who we were supposed to meet last week, she would love nothing more than to live in a rainforest. Uh, a lot of our animals actually have some connection to the rain. What about some of our exhibit animals that we would find in the rainforest? Like, would we find the lions in a rainforest? No, our lions probably would not live in the rainforest. Um, I'm trying to think of What about them. tigers? Our tigers, some, of, some tigers do like kind of more forest areas, so our tigers could be found there. Our white-handed gibbons could be found there. Um, trying. So like the tigers that we have are Amur tigers, Siberian tigers. So, so probably not our cold. particular no. tigers, but maybe there are like Bengal tigers or um, Sumatran tigers. Those would all probably. Orangutans would be one that you'd find in the rainforest. Yes. Orangutans would love the rainforest. And then our Discovery Center is pretty much a rainforest in and of itself. And so any of the birds that you find in our Discovery Center here at the zoo would love to live in the rainforest. And so on cold winter days, we have a lot of people that come and they just like to sit in our Discovery Center and listen to the birds and feel the warmth while they're in there. It's a great place to go when it's cold. Yes. All right, so we're just kind of decorating our rain sticks with um, construction paper and tissue paper, but you can use pretty much anything that you want to make stick. So if you have stickers, that would work really well, or glitter glue, of course, that'll take a while to dry, um, but um, that would work really well on here too. You could paint them, you could just use crayons and markers and color all over them. Um, I have some construction paper leaves that I cut since we're making a rainforest, so I have some construction paper leaves that I cut that I'm gonna glue onto mine just so it looks like the rainforest. Now, the rainforest is different from the forest that we have around here. The trees we have around here, what happened the, during the winter time to our trees? During the winter, our trees are going to lose their leaves. So right now, if you look outside, our trees kind of look bare because they're trying to grow back the leaves like they do every spring, uh, but they will drop their leaves during winter time frame and kind of go dormant or go to sleep. Okay, but the ones in the rainforest don't do that. No, they do not. Uh, the rainforest doesn't really have a winter. It might have a dry and a wet season, but it's not going to have a winter, so their trees do not drop their leaves. What are some of the foods that we might get from the rainforest, do you know? I believe a lot of our fruit probably would come from the, or not a lot, but some of our fruit would come from the rainforest. Um, a lot of our, a lot of our wood or trees, things that we use from trees would come from the rainforest as well. Um, what are some other things that you know? Um, so my favorite thing that comes from the rainforest is chocolate. Chocolate comes from the rainforest. One. There are over like, I think there are over like 2,000 different plants that grow in the rainforest that only grow in the rainforest that we like to eat. So parents who really like to drink coffee every morning, um, the rainforest is where we get our coffee from. I'm not a parent, but I enjoy coffee. <laughs> um, and then uh, also uh, pineapple would grow in the rainforest, mangoes, bananas, coconut, all of that would come from the rainforest. So rainforests are really important to people because we get a lot of food from there. All right. So you can keep decorating all the way down. I think it's gonna take a really long time for me to completely cover my rain stick, so I may switch to crayons here after I get these last pieces of tissue paper on. 
And then when you're done, you can have a concert for your family and sing some songs. If you don't have paper towel rolls at home, other instruments you can make. You can make drums out of some recycled materials from your recycle bin, such as um, if you have like an oatmeal tube uh, container, that would make a really good drum, or some yogurt cups, um, those would make some good drums. Also, I like to make meringue maracas too. And so one of my favorite things to make maracas out of would be um, paper plates. And so I put together an example of a maraca. So this one I filled with some dried peas, but I just um, filled it up in the middle and then I folded it in half and stapled all the way around it. And so um, then you can shake it and make a maraca so the kids can spend their day today making all sorts of different kinds of musical instruments and put on a little concert for you and you can look up some fun sounds of the rainforest and so you can have, I like all the leaves you put on yours, so you can have a colorful rain stick. All right, so I'm assuming today, Christina, that you brought an animal that we might find in the rainforest. Yes, Who did you bring did. for us to see today? I brought one, another one of our little bug friends for the rainforest, and so this one specifically, when I pull him out, you will see why he probably blends into the rainforest very well. He has some awesome, what we call camouflage which means that he can blend into his home and he's really good at hiding. Let me go ahead and get all of our protection stuff on first. All right, so we uh, have mentioned some stuff with bugs before. How, what are the three parts of a bug? Oh, bugs have three body segments. So they have a head, they have a thorax, and they have an abdomen. So we have an abdomen too, that's our stomach area. Um, and so when you look at a bug, you'll see that they have three sections on their body. How many legs do um, insects have? Bugs will have six legs. Six legs, all right. I wonder if we'll be able to see the legs really well on this insect when you get it out. All right, come here, little girl. She's a little fragile, so I have to be careful taking her out. But right here, we have our little Vietnamese walking stick. So I'm sure you can guess why these guys are called walking sticks, since she looks like a stick with legs. <laughs> uh, that is why she, as I mentioned earlier, she has some great camouflage that would work really, really well in the forest, uh, because she looks like a stick. And when she's trying to protect herself, she has what I like to say, she has one move, and it's play stick. <laughs> she will hold her body really, really still, and she just looks like a branch with a bunch of little tiny branches, which is a great way to defend herself in the wild, make sure that she doesn't get eaten, because she is an herbivore, so she loves her plant. So she's gonna be up high in the tree, she's gonna eat all of the leaves left and right, uh, pretty much anything. If these guys were to get loose in the United States, they can literally eat anything. They can eat our corn, they can eat our grass, they can eat a lot of different plants, including poison ivy, and it has no mm. effect to them. So we need to be very careful that we keep her in our education oh, building. Yes. She is one that she gets to go on programs to meet people, but she gets to go on programs to meet people inside. <laughs> <laughs> she does not uh, go outside just because not only can these guys eat anything, but these guys are a type of bug that is really cool. Uh, so I keep saying she. I know that she is a she based a little bit based on her look as well as these guys are something called parthenogenic. So I know that's a really, really big word, uh, but basically that means that all of our colony is made up of females because because they just make eggs and the eggs are clones of themselves. Okay. So they're like little mini-me's. So if you go home and you talk to your daughter and you say that she's your mini-me, well these guys make actual mini-me's. So they're just copies of themselves Correct. then? They're little copies of themselves. Okay. So she and all of her sisters and all her mothers, their DNA, the internal, all that sciencey stuff are exact copies of themselves. So can you kind of point out what on her? So we said that they have six legs. Now if you look closely, you might get confused because she has a lot of um, parts that look like legs on her yes. body sticking out. Can you point and count which are actually her legs? I can. So we have one leg right here, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. I had so. to make sure when I grabbed her that she had six legs because another awesome thing about these bugs is they can regenerate their legs or they can grow it back if it gets stuck and falls off. 
So when we're trying to teach you guys that uh, all bugs have six legs and I bring a bug with five, I get funny looks. <laughs> so I made sure she had six legs for us. So on top of what I think is her head right there, yes, this what is are those? Head. You did not count those two little things sticking up. So what not. are those? So those are her antennas. Those are going to kind of help her make sure that she has stuff to go in front. So when, when she walks, if she was walking, uh, she would use her front legs as kind of a main guide, but then she uses those antennas to make sure there's nothing directly in front of her to run into. Because if you're having your arms like this, that doesn't mean something's not going to come up and kind of hit you in the face. So that's a second uh, that's a second kind of protection to make sure she knows where she's walking. But she does have eyes. She does have eyes. I don't know if y'all can see them, but her little head up here um, underneath the glove is that's her head and she has eyes right on the side of her head which are really small and she has little tiny horns on top so if you look underneath the horns that's where her eyes are going to be they're not actually horns it's just part of her body to make her look more like a stick so it's just little bumps on her body okay so you said that she likes to eat leaves what do we feed her here at the zoo at the zoo we feed her romaine lettuce so she gets lettuce um, and she gets sprayed multiple times a day so we can kind of mimic that uh, mimic the rainforest to make sure it's nice and humid for her okay and that also helps the lettuce stay a little bit fresher longer for them to keep eating. She's doing a really good job staying still for us. Yes, our uh, walking sticks either go from not moving at all for programs and playing stick to trying to crawl all over you and you don't really know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I came prepared with having something for her to sit on. All right, makes her much more comfortable. It does. And so if you look at her coloring, she has kind of a brownish green coloring to her. It depends on our colony, depends on the color. Uh, this specific colony, because we have two colonies in our department. When I say colony, I mean all of those guys are from the same uh, DNA are from the same family and we have two families so to say okay um, and so this specific family is known for kind of having that little darker green or darker brown and green mixture versus our other one is going to be a little bit more of the straight brown coloring okay so each of the families can have different looks but they're going to stay between a brown and a green color in the wild now she's about probably about what five inches long how big can these particular walking sticks get these particular walking sticks probably six inches at max they're not going to be the largest walking sticks but they're not going to be the smallest we have little small walking sticks around here uh, we have some bigger ones as well but the largest walking sticks in the world I believe are the Malaysian walking sticks which can be about the length of my forearm Wow that wrong. is a big that is a big stick. bug <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no these guys she's probably about fully grown um, based off of her size I would say she's probably about 10 months old they don't have a very long life so I'm basing the fact that she's fully grown on her age because they only live to be about a year, a little bit more, a little bit less. So okay. they're one of those bugs that they reproduce and they only have a short lifespan. They eat and reproduce and that's what they do. And so she'll lay eggs without us noticing. She will enjoy eating her food and honestly just sitting and eating all day. I'm all right with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, if people have been watching these videos, um, they may have also seen a video with a millipede in yes. it. And so um, what is the difference between our millipede and our walking stick here? Our millipede versus our walking stick, so they're both going to be invertebrates, which means that they don't have bones like we do, but our walking stick is a true bug because she has the three portions of her body and she has six legs, versus our millipede is not actually going to be a true bug. They are an arthropod. Mm -hmm. They're an arthropod, which means that they're in a different category, a different family of bugs, which have more legs than most bugs, and then they don't have the three sections of their body. Okay. All right, so millipedes have way more than yes, six Yes, millipedes legs. can have anywhere from our small little house millipedes having probably about 50 to 100 legs to upwards of 400 legs. All right. They have a lot of little legs. Okay, well, thank you so much, Christina, for bringing in a walking stick for us to see. And we hope that you have a chance to um, check out some of our videos to see other animals that um, are native to the rainforest. And we hope you had fun making our rain sticks today. And we look forward to seeing you again on the next Zoo Creates. Bye. Bye.